Uh, so this time we're going to do a quick review of, and talk about the Mark II keg washer, keg and carboy washer. Um, so the way I got this one was actually a little bit of a funny story. Is I had seen them around and I was like, you know, I don't really see the point in it. Yeah. Um, you know, I can clean my own kegs and carboys. You know, why do I need one? And uh, I bought some kegs off of someone and he was trying to sell this and he hadn't had any buyers yet. And uh, he said, hey, do you want a keg washer? I was like, I don't know if you're giving it away. <laughs> I'll take it. And I'll tell you what, I if this thing dies, I'm buying a new one. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the pump died on it, and I, I got a replacement pump. I uh, reached out to Mark, you know, the Mark II, and he actually, him and I emailed back and forth. And uh, evidently, even when the pumps die, you can clean those up and do something to get them going again. Hmm. Uh, but I tossed it as soon as it died. Yeah. So I had to just buy a new pump. Wow. But uh, it, I got to say, it, it, one, it's a huge saver of sanitizer. Um, because I think I've talked before, I like putting my sanitizer in, in the kegs for storage. And it, this here, it just doesn't use hardly any. And you can put your carboys on here. You can put buckets on here. Uh, you can put kegs on here. And they just wash them out. And I know some people, uh, one of the guys in the club will put PBW in it. And hook his carboys up and just leave it running for 30 minutes hmm. or an hour. Yeah, that probably cleans it right up. Yeah. It probably looks great afterwards. Yeah, I know huh. myself, I, I like batch cleaning my kegs, so I'll kind of keep saving the dirty ones. And then once I have enough of them, I'll try to knock them all out. And uh, yeah, it just makes it so much easier. Hmm. And uh, it's great for the carboys. My all rounder fits on here, although you have to hold it, um, but it'll hit the top with the stream. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, my main hmm. tip is make sure you put a power strip on it so you can turn it on and off easily. Um, you don't want to run the pump dry. You want to make sure that you fill it up till you, you cover the pump itself with water. And there's a fill line in here uh, for those who can see well. Yeah. Um, Not me. I still can't see. Yeah. I'm standing right here. Yeah. So uh, just to give you a quick demo, um, I'll throw the bucket on here. First, it's not as visually pleasing as the carboy, but the carboy is coming. It's got little ridges to support the bucket. And, you know, you hear the stream kind of hit it. Oh, oh, okay, and you don't lift the bucket. That's the most important thing. <laughs> Holy but uh, sometimes you got to look out for foam. It'll start foaming up with star sand, and uh, you just turn it off and let it subside. So and we'll go grab... The carboy. Mm. <laughs> and it has this nice little detachable collar for it to kind of hold the carboy in there. Did it come off? Mm -hmm. No, I think it's good. I think it was just had it tilted. Hit it. Mm. And it just coats the entire carboy with a steady stream of sanitizer and it dumps out the bottom. That is really, that's pretty amazing that it, yeah, every every surface in there is getting hit. Yeah. So, it's and like I said, I have the same experience with the all-rounder. It covers the entire thing. Um, if you want to get a little sanitizer, I'll, I'll tilt it. And then, at least with the all-rounder, tilt it and then kind of collect it and then turn it off. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah, so it's, I could probably... Talk the misses into just having this as a water feature in the backyard. Oh, there you they, go. They turned on all the time and just put like a purple light down yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, so that's very cool. cool. So, and it works with kegs the same way. Um, we have a keg from our, you may recognize this keg from our pressure fermenting episode. Try not to make a mess. There we go. There we go. And just like you see, you know, just like the carboy, it covers the entire thing in cleaner. Um, I always like hitting all my stuff before, you know, I think it's clean right before I'm ready to um, call it done. I'll hit it with this real quick, then I know it's covered. Yeah. Um, you get all those buckets floating around with brewing. Um, you know, I'll just set this up and hit them one after the other, and it yeah. takes five minutes, six minutes. Wow, that's pretty cool. So, and yeah. then another nice thing I like about this is that the pump itself, this uh, this plastic thing, it actually unscrews from the pump and he includes this cable or this uh, fitting here and this screws into the pump and you can plug this bad boy into your liquid. 
Is that leaking? I don't think so. Yeah, maybe a little. And then if that pole wouldn't be there, but um, you know, you just hook it up and it runs it through the liquid tube and dumps it back into the thing and you can leave that running for a while. Um, mm. Because who knows what's in those liquid tubes? Yeah. I mean, they're three feet long and, you yeah. know, narrow, so. Yeah, and it's, I think, you're, yeah, and you were saying that the, uh, some people use PBW in there instead of the star sand and it cleans those things up? Yeah, you know, they'll use PBW, take it out, rinse it out, put star sand in it. Yeah, and, wow. But, yeah, so it runs about $100 online, uh, you know, different stores, and I, I mean, I think it's worth it, personally. Yeah, that's, I don't know, that's right at the that point for me and I was like eh, it's a hundred dollars bucks but, yeah yeah and uh, I don't know so if you know someone who has one the next time you have some cakes to clean ask to borrow it and yeah, uh, yeah I, I bet you you'll be convinced so yeah I did uh, a brown where I fermented it in the in a corny cake mm -hmm. I've been experimenting with mm -hmm. that and I used English yeast and English yeasts are notoriously active yeah, very croisony. Yeah. yeah, and so I'm not looking forward to cleaning that out once I kick that keg. So I may be borrowing this from you. And there you if go. it works really well, then be a hundred dollars well spent. Now, if to add a little more value to it is, I bought a fitting like this, and uh, I hooked it up to um, some tube, and I used it for my recirculating wort chiller. You know, yeah. so I used the same pump, and I put it in a big cooler with cold water and use it to recirculate water through my um, immersion chiller. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, double duty. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I, yeah. I see what you're saying. A hundred bucks is a little pricey. It's, and it's just me personally. Some yeah. people would be like, Oh, a hundred bucks. Yeah. I'll buy a couple yeah. of them just in case one breaks. But that's kind of the, my internal break point. Yeah. Where I'm like, Ooh, it's a hundred. That's three digits now. So yeah, and it's just cause I'm a cheap wad. And, and I leave the thing set up. Cut. I'll be honest, I leave the thing set up in my garage all the time. So anytime I need to sanitize something, I just walk out with it, loop, <laughs> hit the power, bam, it's done. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you probably know, if you don't, this is good info, that um, sanitizer, if you, uh, you can hit it with a pH strip, and I think it's below 3.2, I'll put the actual number here. If it's below 3.2 pH, you can still use it. Uh, if you use something like RO or distilled water to make your sanitizer, it's a little pricier, but it lasts forever. So it does, yeah. You know, so yeah, so you can leave it running and just you know check every once in a great while, and you know you can use it whenever you need it. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, I was just thinking about the the PBW thing. I don't know if I'd want to let PBW sitting in here. That might yeah. degrade the plastic. Yeah, PBW is not safe with plastic. Yeah, so, so that's... Yeah, and you'd want to rinse it off beforehand. Yeah. I was just thinking that I turned my wife onto the joys of PBW. She's using it in the kitchen. I'm like, man, if we had something to just put it on here, you know, like vases and all kinds of things. But, uh, oh well, yeah. that's not going to work for, for me. I'll figure something else out. So um, some of the smaller carboys don't fit on it. Like I got a couple three-gallon carboys, and, and they don't fit on it just because they're too uh, oddly shaped. Uh, like the one I have is square, and it tips over. Mm. Um, but really, you can just hold it for a little bit. It's oh, not yeah. a big deal, yeah. Yeah, because <clears throat> yeah, would you say it's six or seven minutes just to... No, I mean, I mean, it takes me six or seven minutes to go through all of oh. my buckets and stuff oh. at the end of a brew day. You know, I've already washed them and all, yeah. and, and I just hit them up, put on here to get sanitized. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you just leave it on there for a minute? Yeah, not even, yeah. A couple seconds? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, you just need to coat the whole thing. Yeah. Have you tried your no-chill container on there? My no-chill container? Yeah, yeah, I run the no-chill yeah, container. Thinking... And actually, the nice thing about the no-chill container is you can tip it. It's got enough room so that the opening's pointing down, and you can leave it there. Oh, yeah. Until it drains yeah, out. Yeah, it just yeah. balances just right. Yeah. Nice. So, Very cool. Yeah. All right. So, uh, and the new ones look nicer than this one. This is a kind of an old-school one, but... Yeah. yeah. So, if you have one... Oh, and I should also say, in all honesty, you can also make one of these with a bucket... Uh, um, pond pump and you know some creative PVC work yeah so I've seen those and again that hundred dollars is that break point it's like you know it's a hundred dollars and I could make one yeah but it's only a hundred dollars but it's a hundred dollars yeah you know it's just like I don't know if it's worth a hundred dollars just to buy one to have it I don't know yeah but you throw the bucket in there now it's a hundred now it's you know five dollars more yeah for the, <laughs> I'm just so, kidding yeah no but yeah I'll probably wind up picking one up because 
those are pretty cool. And I'll probably replace his with mine and see if he notices. Yeah. Okay. That won't. I'm just kidding. I got a brand new pump, so. Oh, yeah. 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 So. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or want to let us know how you clean your stuff and how you sanitize it and why having this is a good or bad idea, go ahead and leave a comment. Uh, if you're here at the end of the video, go ahead and subscribe, please. Um, that's it. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for watching our video. Check out our website at coloradobrewtalk.com for more great content. While you're there, be sure to leave us a comment or drop us a line with your thoughts. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at CO Brew Talk, or follow the links below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future content. Or episodes. That's the case, baby. <laughs>